once again this is the ugly truth I'm here at the Ontario legislature at Queens Park on Saturday February 26 2011 um, supposed to be a protest here uh, against uh, metered internet billing or usage based billing as it's known and uh, came to check it out let's take a closer look and see what's going on so we're starting to get a little more of a turnout here People showing up uh, to protest against uh, metered internet usage-based billing, protest against Rogers and Bell, and uh, sign petitions. We want net neutrality, and we don't want metered internet. Television uh, isn't metered. Your telephone isn't metered. This also falls under telecom. If you pay a flat fee, especially if you pay for a, a higher premium for a larger package, high-speed internet, you shouldn't be capped, you should have unlimited use. Um, you know, if the argument is that uh, it costs more per gigabyte uh, to deliver the service, then they should restructure their billing instead of having a flat fee and then billing you on top, then they should just bill per gigabyte at a uh, competitive uh, rate. It costs them about one penny per gigabit downloaded or uploaded. They want to charge one to four dollars uh, once people exceed their cap. So obviously this is unjust, especially in a de democratic society that relies on internet to share information. So we're here to protest that. So we've got Calvin, the event organizer here for the protest against usage based internet billing, and he's going to say a few words for us. Uh, why, why are we here today, Calvin? All right, we're here today to protest um, usage-based billing. Um, essentially, the Canadian government is forcing all Canadian internet service providers to follow the same business model, which is going to crush uh, innovation in Canada's marketplace, um, fo making everyone follow the same business model. Essentially, uh, makes it so that only the big players can uh, exist in our marketplace and it takes out all the small independent ISPs and so uh, what we're looking to do uh, primarily is to make the government put a stop to usage-based billing or not to usage-based billing but the imposition of usage-based billing on all ISPs it's fine if Bell, Rogers, whoever wants to charge their customers with usage-based billing but it shouldn't be uh, the law that all internet service providers have to that, that essentially ruins competition. And so um, that's number one we're trying to get rid of today, but uh, we're also trying to uh, encourage the government to uh, invest in maybe something like a free public option for uh, um, Canadian residents so that they can uh, have free internet across the country in all populated regions. Uh, we're also trying to get um, the Canadian government uh, to introduce more competition into our marketplace uh, to free up the uh, you know the, the chokehold that the big companies have on us, and uh, we're also trying to get uh, the government to uh, own their own infrastructure and lease it out to internet service providers. All right. How do you feel about net neutrality? Is that part of your well, net neutrality? Uh, is obvious. Um, without net neutrality, uh, the internet becomes just as bad as your cable box. Uh, people who own it decide what goes on it, um, and they charge you more for it. Um, and we're already verging on net or the breach of net neutrality with uh, what's happening with um, uh, IPTV and that kind of thing. It's basically, the ISPs have said, okay, this is our wire, and on certain parts of this wire, we're going to run the internet. But on other parts of the same wire, we're going to run our IPTV, high, you know, high, high depth streaming, that kind of thing. Um, and we're not going to charge uh, per gigabyte on these services, although they're run in the exact same way. So basically they've said, this is the internet, and we're going to break it up into certain parts and allow parts that run on this part of the wire, right, like our IPTV or VOIP phones, 
um, not to be charged by the gigabyte, but everything else is going to be. And the next, that, that's a stepping stone for them to say, okay, Facebook, YouTube, you pay us $20 billion a year or $20 million a year, and we'll, we'll let you broadcast for free, but everybody else is going to be, you know, usage-based billing. And then, of course, Netflix, they'll never let do that because um, they are a direct competitor for them. So, um, you know, there's lots of things with net neutrality that this is kind of just a stepping stone towards, and we really need to make sure as Canadians that that doesn't happen in our country. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I myself uh, upload all my stuff on YouTube. So Absolutely, it's, it's a video for you, and... maybe 15 minutes long, might be a gig, you know, depending what quality you're uploading it in, maybe more, uh, especially before you compress it. So, I mean, you know, a dollar or two per video, some people on YouTube have 400, 500 videos, you're looking at $1,000 just for a YouTube account. Like, that should be free, period. How do you feel about... Uh... I think when I look around at this protest and the last one, the vibe that I got from some people who said they were going to come out and then didn't. Some of them were saying that they, they felt they didn't need to come out anymore because of uh, Prime Minister Harper saying they were going to so overturn the decision. The government said that they're going to do lots of things, but they haven't really done anything yet. So we need to see a little more action, a little less talk, um, you know, to, to really uh, have confidence in our government that uh, this is going to uh, you know, be solved and that they're going to do other stuff to fix the Canadian internet because right now Canadians pay some of the highest fees for internet in the world we get some of the worst service so you know it's got to stop um, these corporations Bell Rogers Shaw they've uh, put us through too much already so well, you're obviously uh, you know very interested in this topic uh, and fighting yeah, the good fight here stuff. are you uh, planning on uh, organizing any more demonstrations? Well, that's the idea. Once we get a little bit clearer picture of when um, crackdown's going to come, we're going to uh, have a rally a couple days before that, just to keep the momentum up. Uh, with these last two rallies, the government's had a press release two days before our rally, both times, which has really uh, cut off momentum. With the last one, they said, oh yeah, the uh, industry minister, Tony Clement, said that uh, they were going to overturn it, right? He said that on his Twitter, and then uh, two days later they had the... Uh, review of it and uh, they didn't turn it over, they just said they're going to wait 60 days before they implement it. So I mean, you know, that's something that really happened at the last rally that really kind of sucked because uh, two days after that we had a rally and the momentum was killed because of that. With this one they released a press release two days ago which really killed the momentum again and this was a nationwide rally. So, um, you know, th there's things that are being done to kind of kill the momentum of uh, what we're doing and so we're trying to... Uh, try to keep the momentum going and before the decision there will be another round. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you saw McLean's magazine also did a write up there owned by Rogers and uh, they did a total spin trying yeah, well, to convince National people. Post is, uh, I think they're owned by Shaw. Um, at the, the National Post at our last rally we had about um, probably 400 people throughout the day, maybe a peak of uh, 200 at one time. We were, we were there for six hours um, and uh, the, the reporter from the National Post said there were 12 people that came. So, you know, uh, the idea today is that if anybody from the National Post came around, we'd ask them to count to 13 before we uh, did any interviews for them or anything. Because they, they really just made a joke of us last time. And so, uh, and, I mean, Rogers radio stations won't talk to me. When I, I call uh, to get information from them, Rogers on radio stations, I hang up the phone. So, I mean, it's really scary what they're doing so have you uh, thought about uh, or have you approached uh, Ryerson radio uh, CKLN because they've, uh, they've also had an issue with the CRTC recently <laughs> yeah I, uh, I did contact uh, all the campus radio stations at one point for our last rally as well as all the other radio stations in the city um, since then we've had a few of them contact us back you know Humber did a piece on us that kind of thing but there's not a, uh, a lot of interest coming from radio stations and even campus radio stations upsettingly there hasn't been uh, much coming out from them so most of our press release or uh, press has been through um, uh, YouTube, internet, Twitter so you know, we're really hoping to get more of that uh, independent type press out there. Well, I, I, I got a question, do you think that the CRTC brought this up so that they could make it an election issue because it's apparent that the Canadian government's planning a, an election do yeah. you think they only raised this so that this could be a major issue in the election to take the emphasis off other issues? I, I don't think that that's why that this has come about, but it is apparent that they, um, they proposed it in the worst circumstances to get something lesser actually approved. So um, it is like 
they, they are doing some funny things, and I don't think they're being yes, completely honest. So we, we need to be very careful about what uh, we let the CRTC do and not do. Thanks again, and uh, again, keep up the good fight, and uh, I expect to see you at other rallies because I'll be there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you for uh, speaking to us. Uh, why don't you first tell us who you are and uh, tell us why you're here today. My name is Peter Tabbins. I'm the MPP for Toronto Danforth. I'm the Ontario NDP culture critic, and I'm here to support the people who are calling for a stop to metering of the internet. I don't want to talk particularly about the technical details, but I want to talk about the political issues. And that's that no government has ever done anything out of charity or niceness. Uh, they do things because of political pressure. And the people here who are organizing to stop metering the internet are doing exactly what has to happen. This is an issue that will go up and down in public consciousness, but the people who are willing to go in to the fight for the long run continue to make it an issue, make sure that action against metering the internet is seen to be something that the population supports, and that support for metering is bad news, gives us the, much, the best chance of, in the end, preventing this change from happening. The federal Tories, the Harper government, are playing around on this issue may well be wanting to stall it until after the election, hoping that they have the number of seats they need to just push it through. The fact that people have come together, are organizing, and are willing to push, says that there's the potential to stop this very negative move uh, on the part of the internet cable companies. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Are Good you luck today. Are you going to keep bringing it up? Charlie Angus will be bringing it up federally, because uh, I, I don't have jurisdiction provincially but I wanted to come out and show solidarity.